Well, in your book, the problem uh, 11111 asks you to uh, to repeat a, a pattern, a construction, um, and to try to generate a conjecture or proof of what seems to happen every time when you follow the, the pattern and the construction. So they start out with uh, just a straight line uh, that they call DC. Uh, you pick a point A on DC, and then they say to go ahead and construct an arbitrary angle there. So an arbitrary angle would be you know, any angle of any measure. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the 60 degree angle just because it's going to be uh, arbitrary, I guess. Any pick, 60 is my favorite number for today. We'll call this A. You can call this one B. And then the question that they want you to investigate is, well, what happens if you take, if you find another ray here and another ray here that are bisecting these two angles? So since this is 60, this one will have to be 120. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and bisect these two angles as they've requested us to do. So that would be the 30 degree uh, angle there. And since this is 120 here, 60 would be half. Go ahead and draw that in. Go ahead and draw that in. And these points are given um, letters E and F. And so since this was 60 to begin with, then this angle here would just be 30, and this angle would be 30. And since this was 120 to begin with, this angle would be 60, and this angle would be 60 as well. And then the question is, um, what uh, is the measure of EAF? And in this case, EAF is, of course, the 60 plus the 30, or it turns out to be a right angle. And what's so curious about this is, um, well, we could try it with a different angle. And they ask us actually to try it with a different angle. So let's go ahead and do it again and see what happens. So again, I've got D. A, C, uh, instead of the 60 degree angle, why don't we pick something a little bit different just to contrast it. So instead of 60, oh, why don't I pick 40? So if I pick 40 as my, uh, my location, I guess, for point B, well, then we would have to pick 20 degree angle as the bisector and half of that angle's measure. There's where F would be, and these would be 20 and 20. And of course, if that's 40, then um, we would have to take, let's see, 140 as the supplement to it. So 70 would be half the measure. And this would have to be 70 and 70. And I guess the thing that uh, we're noticing here is that EAF in both cases, EAF, uh, the, the angle that results seems to be a right angle. And that would be a good conjecture. Um, seems like it's always a right angle, at least by these two um, um, examples. And so uh, we, what we have to do is then prove this uh, in the last part of the problem. So let's take a look at how we might prove it. So we have a setting that sort of looks like this. where these two angles are always the same. And this angle and this angle are always the same. And so we can algebraify this by giving these some algebra um, variables. So why don't we call this measure x and this measure x, and this measure y and this measure y. And uh, what we think is true is that uh, x plus y will always be equal to 90 degrees, right? When we're set up in this particular scenario. So this is really what we want to show. That's what we want to show. Well, the first thing we can see is that um, x plus x plus y plus y 
and it has to be equal to 180 degrees because, of course, we have a straight angle here. So 2x is plus 2y is, has to be 180. Using uh, combining like terms, we get 2x plus 2y has to be equal to 180. Um, and now I can kind of see where I want to go. Um, if I can factor out the 2 here, I get an x plus a y, uh, 2 quantity x plus a y equals 180. And then going ahead and dividing by 2, I get x plus y is equal to 90. And so, <clears throat> so that's the reasoning why uh, these two angles, anytime we're in this setting as we are here and here, these two angles will always add to be 90 degrees.